to the Home Improvement Channel, UK. Right, so we're just gonna give you a little background information about what's going on. Phil's gonna explain. We did a little giveaway, told people to enter, tell us why they think they should win a little makeover in one of their rooms in their houses. Laura entered, she works for the NHS. Her and her partner basically entered and this is their home that they've not moved into yet because obviously they're trying to get rid of This little series we're going to do, first series today is going to cover laminate, so stay tuned for that. We're going to talk you through all the steps in how to install laminate, and then we're going to cover skirtings and architrave, and also a blind install, which will show you when it's ready. First step, you've got to get this underlay done. Right, so now it's time to install the underlay. On this occasion, they already had the flooring here. We was going to supply it. We, we prefer to use a fiberboard underlay on a timber floor, but we've got foam. This is what we've got, so we're going to use it. And you basically just roll it out. We staple it down because it's a bit flimsy. You can just loose lay it. When you're laying this sort of underlay, there's no right or wrong way, especially with the foam stuff. You can flip it, dip it down. We're going to do it long ways because we've got furniture on the other side. So we're going to lay this end, pull the furniture over, and then lay that side. Let's do it. Now, when you're cutting through this stuff, you have to be really careful because the stuff's really thin. So when you cut through it, just lightly do it because you end up cutting through seven layers at the same time, even if you've been doing it every day like me. Let's see if I've got away with it. It's magic. When it comes to, say, awkward like this, if you're in a room, just splice it in line with anything like that. It, it's basically called like a relief cut so you can get closer to the actual object that you actually want to get near. And that's it. We've got half the underlay down now, guys. And we're going to leave the other half until we've got the flooring actually laid. So the next step now is, I'm going to let Phil explain. We've got ourselves an off cut of the actual flooring we're going to be putting down. And what we're going to do, get ourselves an off cut, we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to go round undercutting all the frames, the newel post. Make sure your newel post can take it because some are not the best so you don't really want to be taking material out of it but this one's all right, this is getting changed so we don't care, we're going to undercut that. We're going to take a little bit more out of the stringer, follow me. So this is called a stair stringer, if you've got one, these are normally fixed to the brick wall. So you can take a bit out, it's not the end of the world. This one's actually already been done at some point, we just need to trim it a little bit more. So we're nearly under, not quite. We've got another set of doors there, we're gonna undercut that frame there as well. And then we'll move on to the next, so let's get that done. So when we say undercut, what we mean is to cut the bottom of architraves, door linings, etc. We recommend using a multi-tool, but you can do this with a hand saw, and there are another couple of tools, but we aren't getting into that. So for a DIY, if you ain't got a multi-tool, get one. But if you don't want to get one, use a hand saw. It will work. It will a bit more work, but... So let us show you what we're going to do. Take our scrap, put it upside down. Probably not the best to demo on, because this is already up in the air, but it gives you an idea of what you're going to be doing. And just like that, that bit of material underneath, you knock it out, and when you come to install your flooring, that's underneath, and you look like you're the best cutter or in the world. You've done all the boring bits, undercutting, put your underlay down, now it's time to start laying some flooring. This has been acclimatized, so bring your flooring in, store it in your house for two days, then put it down. When you're setting out where you want to go, you need to decide the direction you're going to go. We're going this way. And then you need to decide what wall you want it to be square off. This is an awkward wall, right? So, this is an awkward room, sorry. So, there's nothing for us to square off. We're just gonna have to use our experience, but with a more easier uh, room, you wanna come off the exterior walls, not the internal walls. Run yourself a line in and measure off your exterior wall and check. We're just gonna come off here because this room's super awkward and then we're gonna eyeball straight what we think looks right, and you can do that as well, there's no wrong or right. So our very first pull of call, because we've got pipe straight away, is to mark our length, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna land halfway on this pipe, and we'll show you exactly why in a moment. 
So I'm just going to mark that. When you're laying this, if you can, it can't always be done because of the shapes of rooms and going through and all that, is try and lay from the left to the right so that you're laying with this clip in this direction. So when you put your first bolt down, you want this big section of clip like this. So in the front and on the right, and as you lay, you go in the small, the small clip goes into the big clip. Reason for that, it's much easier to fit it that than going backwards. You can go backwards, but it is a bit more of a pain. I use a combination square, that's the name of it. So what we do, this slides back and forth. Make sure we're covering the board and we just sit it square on the edge of the board and that gives us a perfect 90 degree. So when we mark this, that is perfectly square. So I have this and I have a rubber mallet and obviously a pencil. Right, now we've got our mark, you've got a few different options for cutting it. So if you're DIYer, you might have a jigsaw, you might have a handsaw, or you might want to go and get yourself a laminate guillotine. They're not super expensive, they're really cheap now. I recommend it. Up to about 10 mil after that, once you go over 10 mil in thickness on laminate, forget about it, they're terrible. Only thing with a guillotine you need to remember is what piece you want. So I want this piece, I am gonna cut on the right hand side of that mark because that takes a big chunk of flooring out. So these blades ain't actually sharp, they're blunt. And what we do, we bring the guillotine down to our mark on the side we don't want. Make sure we're square. Our one's a bit riggedy now because it's old. And you just run, run it through. This is the first piece that's gonna be going in here and it's gonna be finishing half on this pipe. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna set it with our five to eight mil gap, which is recommended by this particular flooring manufacturer horror. So check your specs. And we're just gonna mark the center of that pipe. And then we're gonna lay it flat in front up to where we're gonna be here. And we're just gonna mark the edge, which is there. We marked that bit of pipe there, didn't we? So there's our mark. And right here, because we put it on the center, we know that we need to put our bit in that cross there, and we'll show you in a second and it needs to come to that line at least. So when we cut out, that'll give us expansion. So now that you've got your marks. So center and your depth. How far back you gotta go, like I showed you on the other side. You take it back up with your two pieces connected. Ooh, wibbly, we're there. There's our scrap. And we're just gonna put that underneath like so, because we don't wanna mash the floor on. And we just take ourselves a little 20 mil bit here. That's enough expansion for us, Gaff. I'm just going to hold these tight and drill through. And you should be left with something that looks like that. And then we're going to take that off. And then what we do is we hook around the rod, like so. And we just hook this one on. And that's what you're left with. This is the clicking method for this system. So with most of this style, we haven't got the mallet down style clips. This is how I do it. I go in on the small clip, down. And as you can see, we are wibbly as you like, which happens. We're gonna bring it around, lift it up. We've got that end in, this end's not. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our uno malato and we're gonna tap it really gently in. And we slowly bring it down and then we just tap it on. What we want to see, we don't want to see equal stepping down and we don't want to see one ear, one ear, one ear, one ear, one ear like that. We want to see random, so we're going to come down a big gap, down a little gap, maybe we'll go down a bit more and then we'll come back up. So we're just going to shuffle it so it looks completely natural and random. Sometimes when you come up against door frames, you've got to go in sideways, there's no way of picking it up and all that. But basically, we've cut it so it'll go under, all right? Into position. Let's get that back out without damaging it. What you're gonna to wanna to do is, if you use a knife, or I bought this tiny, funny miniature plate, it's hilarious, and you just sit that on this clip here, and we're gonna run it. So, yeah, we don't need to go all the way. Is, and what we've done, we've just reduced the clip down. It's still there, but it's, it's really shallow now. And then we can pop it back rather than lifting it. So if we get that done now, I'm gonna do this end one the same. There we go. We've got it in, but you see it's in front of the clips. 
but because we've took the shave the top of the clip off, it's slightly shallow. This will go. Uh, that one there is going to go underneath. Well, that's why Jack's going to hold it down. Jack's just going to hold that. So we're just going to give it a gentle tap. What should Jack close in? That's it, that's simple. We've clipped the end in, but yep. I'm just knocking it up. And then I've tipped this up and in, just this end. And then we're going to get a bit of scrap. And then what we're going to do, we're then going to put this in there. And we're just going to tap it up. And while we're doing that, we're always tapping this. We're not trying to break it. We're just trying to stop it from getting caught and going up and over. Put a bit of pressure on. Check that. And then, look, super difficult, super easy. That's all you have to do. Take the clips off, get into position pull it into place. If you take too much of the clip or you're unsure, you can just glue this, but I'm confident that's not going anywhere.